A number of people have asked me, what do you think about what's happening in retail? Uh, because what's happening in retail has been dramatic, it has been consistent, and it has been industry changing across multiple industries. Now, when I first got into this business of um, coaching and consulting with premier companies and luxury brands, and uh, I was focused on retail. And I was focused on, on retail from the standpoint of helping these brands uh, do a better job of the client experience, the customer experience, and of course some of the sales and marketing strategies. But one of the things that I noticed in this process, now we're talking about 18 years ago now as I began this process, one of the things I noticed was the shift that was taking place. And I think we're seeing that uh, in, a, in a defining moment right now. We're seeing a change that uh, even though it has been dramatic and significant, it's just starting. But here's the opportunity in this change. What's happening? Well, brick and mortar stores are closing. They're closing, in fact, at a rate of about a thousand a month. And why are they closing? Because of the cost of brick and mortar locations, because of the labor costs. Uh, in New York, for example, the real estate co costs are enormous and it is very difficult to maintain a brick and mortar store, particularly in an environment where so much has changed. Well, what's changed? Well, first of all, the consumer's uh, taste have changed. The, uh, the, the clothing, the, the products that were once uh, very appealing are no longer appealing. Everyone is dressing down when it comes to work, and uh, as a result, people who sold uh, high fashion, formal clothing, uh, very expensive clothing, are not seeing the kind of attention and attraction that they once saw. Now, the other thing that's happening is obviously behavior. Behavior has changed. Not only buying behavior because of shifting tastes, but how one buys what they want. They're going online. They are buying on their phone. And as a result, retailers that have major investments in real estate are struggling. And the third factor is competition. There are a lot more brands now that are in business and the consumer has a lot more to choose from. So what you're really seeing here is a dramatic shift in business models. It's a very different mo business model than it was um, uh, not that long ago, in fact, but certainly from the time that when I began this process. Now that is, can be discouraging if you're in retail, but it can also be exciting because even though models have shifted, there's something that we know has not shifted. People are still going to buy products and services they're still going to buy at the retail level. They may not walk into the store, but they're going to buy directly from a brand somehow. And what that also means, and what I started to see early on in this process, is how this shift has created opportunities for so many more brands that want to market to consumers. In fact, consumers don't care much anymore about one brand over another if you can satisfy their needs and they feel good about the product and service and they understand what it is that you offer and you can deliver to them the way they want it uh, conveniently which is often online and through delivery and uh, they get great value. So what does that mean? That means that all of these brands that are that seem to be dying have to shift their focus. They have to reinvent themselves. And this is a time of great opportunity if you are working in a retail establishment or if you are growing a business uh, where you're catering to clients and customers and you want to get some of this business that is uh, out there up for grabs because of the retailers going away. So what are the things that I recommend for retailers today, particularly high-end retailers, to tackle this challenge where retail is, seems to be quite challenged, but in fact, 
there are great opportunities. Well, the first thing I recommend is looking at your business now digital first. In fact, every business now has to look at itself digital first. Now, what does that mean? First is, you know, how will my product or service show up on, my, on this phone? How will I sell this on a website? Uh, how do I approach what I'm doing from the standpoint of the person who meets me through this device or some other device, whether it's a tablet, whether it's a computer? Um, that's number one. And you can see right away why the brick and mortar uh, businesses have a challenge because their focus has been physical first, our physical location. We have to have a headquarters, we have to have a flagship, we have to have multiple stores in, in, in these cities, and we have to then uh, cater and, and send physical products to those locations to accommodate those people who are coming into those physical locations. Well, they're not coming into those locations anymore. They're, they're, they're shopping online. They're, they're looking, they're, they're swiping and saying, oh, that looks interesting, let me order that. And it's coming to their door. Uh, it's an incredible time in, in what's happening. So the step number one is to think digital first. Step number two is really a branding a leveraging step, and that is uh, leveraging your brand as an attractor, understanding that this effort you put into brand building uh, is, is important. This is not a uh, insignificant thing that you've done, and this effort that you've put into brand building your brand can be a great attractor. And so when you go online and you see a brand that you're familiar with, you're going to say, oh, let's see what they have to offer. Let's see what this one has to offer. And that's where these larger entities can really do a great job is of carrying forward their brand. Now, how do they do that? That's step number three. Step number three is about understanding the importance of storytelling. So many brands today essentially are saying, buy this at this price, buy this at this price, click here and buy this. And they've lost the, um, I guess, the, the alignment with the power of retailing, telling a great story solving a problem for your customer, putting yourself in the customer's shoes, showing them examples of how other customers have uh, solved their problems using your product, and, and really having a great narrative there, and, and using your storytelling skills better than ever before. That's where brands that have already established uh, a name and where uh, consumers know who they are can really excel in this environment because you don't have to invent something that doesn't exist. You don't have to uh, just pound the consumer over and over again to give them familiarity. You have a legacy that you can build on. And so that's really key is understanding that now tell that story powerfully online. And, and, and use your brand to attract people to that story, but always storytelling every day, every day, every day. Now, step four is, is using that great retail skill, those great conversations, the great dialogue, that great selling skill, where I began in this process helping retailers and brands, using that on the phone, using that on the phone and using it online to give people a great experience, a great digital experience using w the skills that you have. Um, I was working with a brand that was um, an arts and entertainment brand, uh, world renowned, and when they would call on the phone and say, in invite you to get a subscription to their new season, the idea that they were calling you directly at home, it just felt so prestigious and so significant. And so many brands miss that opportunity. So when you are following up, when you are, uh, uh, you know, and you're, if you're using your brand as an attractor, people are telling you to call them, 
they're, they're inviting you to follow up with them. When you follow up with them, that's when you can give them this incredible, high-end, luxury, compelling, distinctive experience. So that's step number four. And step number five is there still is value in having a footprint, a physical footprint. But that physical footprint will often be a pop-up store, it'll be temporary, it'll be certainly nowhere near the ambitions of many retailers uh, the, re the, the retailers have had in, in many years. So that's the strategy. It's a five-step strategy. And uh, the great thing about it is if you're a big retailer, you can do this. If you're a mid-sized retailer, you can do this. And if you're just starting out, you can do this and you can have an impact in a market where consumer tastes and behavior have, have shifted so dramatically that there are great opportunities opening for you. Step number one, be digital first. Step number two is get that brand out there as an attractor. Step number three is tell great stories. Step number four is use that sales and service skill to follow up with people who have expressed interest, uh, to uh, develop loyalty, to create membership, uh, to endear them to your, to your brand. And step number five is think about how you can strategically uh, use a physical footprint to connect with consumers and to build your brand and revenue. If you like this tip, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Share it with someone in your network. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.